A question I get asked all of the time in the comments and when running my photography workshops is how I set up my camera for the best possible landscape photos. So today, that's exactly what we're going to run through. Now, the functions we're going to be covering in today's video are available for most mirrorless cameras. So this is not camera specific. However, you may need to consult your manual to find the relevant settings. I've broken this video down into these five sections to help simplify things. So let's dive straight into the first section, which is the screen setup for the best landscape photos. So firstly, I like to set my histogram onto my LCD and my viewfinder. This helps me see my exposure more clearly. I can see if I'm losing details in the shadows or the highlights. Providing it doesn't take up too much real estate on your screen, I highly recommend having it on there all of the time. So I also like to turn on the rule of thirds grid on the back of my screen as well. This helps me to set up my composition if I'm working within the rule of thirds. I don't do that all the time, but sometimes I do. So it's really handy to have that guideline on the back of the camera. The only touch screen settings I actually use are for when I'm focus stacking. So I've just got my touch to focus turned on and that just enables me to touch the screen where I want to focus before I take the shot. I can also take a shot just by tapping the screen as well if I need to. That's the only time really that I use the touch screen. So it's really handy as well to have a button that you can disable all of your settings on your LCD so you can get a clean view. Now, I, if I press the display button on the back of my camera, it gets rid of my rule of third grids, my histogram and all of my camera settings. So I can just focusing on what it is that the camera is seeing. I can just focus on my composition because it can help you just see things around the edges of the frame that's normally taken up by the camera settings themselves. Another thing I do when setting up the camera for the first time is dive into the settings in the menu and change my LCD screen brightness to plus one in manual. So basically it won't change, it will never change, it'll always be plus one brightness and I find that's a happy medium for me for shooting in most environments. If you have it set to auto, basically the camera is going to choose the brightness of the screen depending on the environment, the ambient light in which you're situated. So you might be in a dark woodland, so the screen will be a little bit darker, and then you might go into bright sunshine, so it will brighten the screen. But I've found that when the screen brightness fluctuates, it's more difficult to get a you know a true representation of what it is you're actually seeing, and having a fixed constant in my mind, is easier to deal with. So we've talked about the screen setup. Let's dive into the menu setup and change a few things that can really help boost the image quality. So first and probably the most obvious one is shooting in RAW. We want to be shooting in RAW to get the most out of our files when we get back to post-production. Now, I choose to shoot in RAW and find JPEG. And if your camera's got two card slots like some of mine do, then you can write RAW to one card slot and a JPEG to the other, meaning you've got a separate file on a separate card, meaning if one of your cards fails, then you've got a backup option. So I highly recommend doing that. There's a few different uh, compressions in terms of your RAW files. You can choose to go uncompressed or compressed. There's a few different options in a lot of different cameras, so you, you choose which one that you think is best for you. I go for the uncompressed, which is the largest file. Another great setting to change to improve image quality for your landscape photos is the shutter mechanism. There's a few different settings you can choose from here. But first of all, if you're not familiar with how the shutter works, briefly, we've got two curtains, the front curtain and the rear curtain. The front curtain comes down and then back up again and exposes, exposes the sensor to light. Then the rear curtain comes down, closing the sensor off to the light and finishing our exposure. The time in which these curtains move is your exposure time, essentially. So what we can change is the front curtain mechanism. We can change that to an electronic version. So that means we don't have that action of the front curtain coming down and back up again, which may introduce vibration onto the sensor and cause a blurry image. Now this tends to happen with longer focal lengths and also longer exposure times. So if we do away with that front curtain, we can make the camera electronically expose the sensor or start the exposure time, and then the rear curtain will come down to finish the exposure. This is called electronic front curtain. So it's worth diving into the menu and changing your shutter mechanism type to electronic front curtain to give you the best image quality when taking your landscape photos. If you're enjoying the content so far, please consider hitting the thumbs up button because this will help YouTube share the content with other people that might find it useful too. So another great setting that can really help you get the best out of your photos is to change your profile, your view to natural live view or a flat picture profile. Now, the reason for this is 
If you've got natural live view set up, most cameras have this available. Um, this will give you a true representation of the raw file when you're viewing the image on the back of the LCD. Now, what, this is so important because the histogram is based on what is shown on the back of the LCD. Well, in most cases anyway. And this means that if you've got your camera picture profile set to something like Vivid or Velvia, one of the most vivid, more, more contrasty uh, profiles, then the, the histogram essentially is representing that. So you've got a much more contrasty looking <laughs> histogram, which might mean when you're out in the field that you perhaps underexpose slightly. And then when you get back and look at your raw file, you might find that you've lost some details in the shadows because you were exposing correctly for the picture profile that, was, that you were actually viewing on the back of the camera. So dive into the menu settings, look for natural live view, or if you don't have that, look for the flattest picture profile that you've got available for your JPEGs. So now we've taken care of those important camera settings in the menu, let's take a look at the uh, camera setups that I've got for when I'm shooting landscapes. And I've got two different modes essentially that I've customized to the custom buttons here on the top of the camera. So I've got mine set to C7 and C6. So the first one that I've got set to C7 is my manual shooting mode. And this is when I've scouted around, I've found a composition, I've got my camera locked down on top of the tripod and I'm ready to take the photo. Basically, this setup I've got here is pretty much 95% of the time how I'm gonna shoot, except for the exposure triangle, which is obviously gonna change depending on how bright the scene is. So first of all, we've got the two second timer turned on. Obviously, you can see the electronic front curtain shutter is enabled and it's in manual focus mode. I've got my lowest possible ISO set, which is 125 on the X-H2. My shutter speed is set to a hundredth of a second, and this is just an uh, approximate shutter speed, which I will then change. And I also have the manual focus scale um, visible on the LCD as well, which is really helpful when I'm manually focusing. So I can then go in to change my ISO, my aperture, and my shutter speed from there, but all of the other settings are pretty much what I would shoot with. So my next customizable mode is when I'm walking around, when I'm scouting, maybe when I'm out with my wife, walking the dog and I'm taking the camera out, it is my walk around settings. And these are really important too because they're completely different to how I shoot when I've got the camera set up on the tripod. So as you can see, we've got no two second timer here. We don't need that for when you're hand holding most of the time. So I've got the electronic front curtain shutter turned on. My autofocus is set to single point. I'm in aperture priority mode with matrix metering turned on. I've also got my auto ISO set not to go above ISO 3200 and my shutter speed not to go below 1 40th of a second. And then I use my rear command dial to adjust my exposure compensation, making it really easy just to change my exposure. So basically aperture priority mode, if you're not 100% sure what that is, is basically you control the aperture, the camera controls the rest of the settings until you change the exposure compensation. So if you know you want to shoot at f8, all you need to do is change the exposure compensation dial to lighten or darken your image. It's that simple. So there's a few other settings I map to the function buttons on my camera as well. So I've got quick access to them that are really helpful and really help speed the process up, meaning we can be quicker, we can react quicker and not miss the all important shot. So let's quickly run through those. So the front button is set to turn my level on and off. This is great because I can toggle my level on and off, quickly see how my tripod is looking to make sure that I'm completely level. This is great, especially when you're doing panoramas as well. Uh, at the bottom left here, we've got my focus modes, which is really handy. I can quickly switch between manual focus, continuous auto and single point auto focus. So the button right next to the shutter button I've mapped to zoom into my image to check my focus prior to taking a shot. So I've got my composition sorted out, I just tap this and I can zoom into the image. I can then use the rear command dial to zoom in and out to closer check my focus. On the back of the camera, we've got the AF button. I'm gonna use this when I'm shooting in manual focus. I just use this to obtain focus quickly. Just move my joystick, my focus point around and use that to lock focus and that works really well. Moving further down the camera, I've got the AEL button set to my aspect ratios. Now this is a great idea if your camera supports the aspect ratios. If you set up a function button, you can quickly change between say 16 by nine, four by five or a square crop, which really helps you to compose your image when you're out in the field. So if you've got in, in your mind's eye that you wanna compose square, Obviously, you just press that button, choose square, and then you got straight into shooting in a square format, which really takes away the distractions in the edges of the screen 
Most cameras will display the crop once you get back to Lightroom and in a lot of cases it's non-destructive as well so you can just go back to your original crop should you decide maybe you want to do a 4x5 instead. But it definitely helps you when you're out in the field you know, composing your image. The Q button here on the back of the camera is another function button I've remapped and I've remapped this to the self timer so I can quickly turn the self timer on and off should I need to when I'm out in the field. The up and down keys on the D-pad I've got set to my ISO so I can change my ISO. I press up on the ISO button and it goes up the ISO value and down it goes down the ISO value. I found this easier than pressing the ISO button on the back and then the rear command dial. Uh, I've just found this easy, it works well for me in most situations. If I press right on the D-pad this takes me to my white balance settings. For the most part it's set to auto white balance, however I do change this quite often especially when I'm bracketing, so if I'm doing auto exposure blending or focus stacking or panoramic images where I'm taking a series of images, I want to make sure the white balance is the same in every single shot. So I want to set the white balance manually and I either do that with a Kelvin value or I'll set it to daylight or shady. Shady is quite good actually for shooting sunset or sunrise as this helps to bring out and saturate the yellow colors. So that's quite a handy one. So I've also got a few items I put in the my menu setting as well so I can quickly access them should I need to. Things that I don't use all of the time but I need to get to quickly on occasion such as the IBIS settings or exposure bracketing, those type of things. So yeah, I pop them in there so within a couple of clicks I know exactly where they are and they're easy to get to. Because the less time we spend messing around with camera settings, the more time we can concentrate on the composition, the exposure, the light and the scene in front of us and that is more important. If you have any other camera settings that you think are really useful, please do drop them down in the comments section. I think that would be great and help other people too. So that's it for this week's video guys. If you're interested in checking out another video, be sure to do so, there's one up there. If you want to support the channel, please do consider subscribing. That's probably one of the best things that you could possibly do. But if you'd like to support us further too, please do consider checking out the Photographer's Clubhouse where we learn, share, inspire one another to create amazing photos. There's monthly videos on there and all that good stuff. Anyway guys, until next week, take care and I'll see you soon.